Loch Ness is just a huge lake. One star. Holes are nicer. All right, guys, something I've been really excited about right here on my channel is the fact that Scotland is having a moment. And I've been saying that on and off throughout my vlogs over the last six months to a year because I truly believe it, I feel it, this excitement for Scotland, and I'm so happy to be sharing that with you guys right here on my channel every single week, right? Tourism statistics are nuts. Last year, 1.8 million more people came to Scotland as a tourist than they did the year before. That is a lot of people, considering there's only 5 million people in Scotland for a start. Meanwhile, those tourists were spending a quarter more on their trips to Scotland than they have been in the years before. So this is all very positive for Scotland. It's really, really good, actually. And where do people mostly go for their kind of information about Scotland and places to go? Uh, you might say YouTube, actually. My videos, you could find a lot of information on my videos about places you can go in Scotland. But actually, probably a slightly more popular place than my videos on YouTube to find information about Scotland is TripAdvisor. You guys all know about TripAdvisor, right? It is the website from America which people can leave reviews on just about any place that exists that you can visit. They get kind of crowd reviewed. And what that means is over the course of hundreds of people leaving these reviews on the website, they get kind of like an average score. You'll get hundreds of reviews and then you'll get a kind of consensus. But they're not always good, right? And actually when you dig a bit deeper into some of the reviews, and I'm talking specifically about the reviews of Scotland here, you'll be quite shocked at some of the, the responses people have left. Some of them are bizarre, scary, shocking, and damn hilarious. And that's what today's video is all about. TripAdvisor reviews of Scotland that you would not expect to see of some of our most famous tourist sites. Um, so that is what today's video is. Guys, thank you so much for joining in. It is great to have you here to share these moments, discuss Scottish culture and other such things, right? And if you're new, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner because then you'll be like family, you'll be in the clan, and you'll be part of the 20% Club. The 20% Club is the great people who have hit the subscribe button because 80% of people who watch my channel have not yet subscribed. What are you guys doing, right? Join the 20%ers. Those people are awesome. Right, okay. TripAdvisor. Dot com. You go into tripadvisor.com and search out some common Scottish locations. And then you look out the bad reviews. And like and some of them are just like like I said, some of them are brilliant and funny and like you just have to be we just have to talk about this. And I'm gonna jump right into the deep end and share with you like a heavy hitter in Scottish tourism. The fairy pools on Isle of Skye. Granted, I have been on Isle of Sky twice, and both of those times the weather has not been good enough to even reach the fairy pools. But the photos on Instagram do the place some massive justice, and like one day I will make it to the fairy pools and I will swim there. Even the fact that I've not been been there, I know that it is a beautiful place. So when you see these reviews, like it's quite shocking. The fairy pools, don't go. One star. There are no loos, no cafe, nothing. That is a pretty harsh review of the fairy pools. Like, I understand, like, he might be a wee bit upset there's no loos or cafe or anything, but it is kind of a remote place in the middle of nowhere. It's supposed to be a beauty spot. You don't want to kind of ruin it with all, like, toilet blocks and stuff, right? Two reviews for this place that back this person's annoyance about the fairy pools, right? One star review. Annoying. No Wi-Fi. Uh, you expect Wi-Fi at a beauty spot in the middle of nowhere. Are you having a laugh, mate? The water was a weird colour. Um, turquoise, fluorescent, brilliant green-blue see-through. I mean, that's all the photos I can see from about the plate. That's why people love it. What do you mean it was a weird colour? It was pretty windy and also there were animals standing about which were pointless. The Wi-Fi thing, bizarre. The water colour thing, bizarre, right? Everybody knows the fairy pools is gorgeous because of the colour of the water. Like, you know that just kind of turquoise, see-through brilliance that you get. That's what the fairy pools are. Weird. And animals standing around which were pointless. You talking about sheep? Because in Scotland we have a lot of sheep, like farms around in that area. They have sheep. It's one of the biggest industries. What do you mean they're pointless? We've got a whole bunch of these. We've got 10 of them to go through because, and there's a lot more than that. We'll get through more. Like, I think one day I might even segregate these into like, reviews of... Like Edinburgh, there's like, you could go through any number of these crazy reviews about Edinburgh. Anyway, the Kelpies. The Kelpies are two big massive horse, water horse statues, which are very significant in Scottish folklore, which were erected off the motorway next to Falkirk. They're enormous, great structures, lit up at night, beautiful things, right? But not according to this one star reviewer. Boring, he says. They are just metal horses. You can go in them and look at metal. Metal and oh, more metal. But unless you're a metal enthusiast, they're very boring. I don't even know what to say to that, guys. Like, I, I really don't. I'm not really sure what you would otherwise expect. They are metal structures, giant metallic structures of 
Seahorses, but what else would you be expecting? People are weird, right? Number three, and this one is about Edinburgh. It's the only one about Edinburgh I'm gonna actually show in this one because I'll do another video about Edinburgh TripAdvisor reviews. One star review, yawn. This could be fighting talk. This is like my city, right, we're talking about here. There was a guy outside the castle dressed as Mel Gibson who was talking nonsense to tourists. He looked like a right pillock. I mean, this just sounds like someone from within the British Isles who is bitter at the success of Edinburgh Castle. By the way, Edinburgh Castle is one of the most successful landmarks in all of UK and tourism rights. They've actually just had to create a queuing system. I mean, I will say, right, it is actually quite an expensive attraction, but it doesn't put people out. It's like got queues out the door. You can't hardly get in the place now. Criticize the castle for being expensive. Criticize it for being, you know, too polished for the tourists and all that. But because there was a guy addressed as Mel Gibson, here is a one star review for the Piping Museum. I didn't even know there was a piping museum, to be fair, guys, right? But this criticism of the piping museum seems really unjust. You would need to be a piping enthusiast to get anything out of this. Um, seriously, this person has went to the piping museum and has disliked it because of all the piping. They play bagpipe music 95% of the time. Only go if you like bagpipes. I've got a bit of despair for humanity reading this review. Number five, all right? This is interesting because I've just been to this place, Urquhart Castle on Loch Ness. On the banks of Loch Ness, I actually did a vlog about it. You'll go up there on the link, you'll see it. There's a link for this Loch Ness vlog that I did. But this review, one star, rubbish. It's just a load of tatty old ruins. One thing about this review, um, the word tatty is something that we would use in Scotland quite a lot. It's a bit of a slang word that means like rubbish. I'm not sure if anybody else around the world uses the word tatty to describe something. So I think this might be a Scottish reviewer. I've said this before in the vlog, I don't think Scottish people were very um, appreciative of the historical sites that we have around Scotland and what they mean and how many people actually love them. So yeah, I think this might be an embittered Scottish person. Self-loathing. We're very good at that in Scotland. Number six, moving swiftly on. Culloden Battlefield. Oh my goodness, guys. Because of Outlander, you guys have watched all my vlogs on Outlander, uh, I got really interested in Culloden, the Battle of Culloden, which was the Jacobites against the British up in Inverness, right? Here is our reviews. I actually got a two star review from this guy, two out of five. Culloden Battlefield is amazing. Duh, it's the worst thing ever. I'm sorry, but really, 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 really bad. The Culloden Battlefield is a lot of money. Just walk around and look at guns and reconsecration of the battle and wear battle clothes. I am a local to the Culloden Battlefield, so I visit a lot and I'm very bored of it. So bye. I think this was a kid. I think it was a local kid who's been like forced by his school or forced by his mum, probably forced by his school to go to Culloden like day in and day out, like over the weeks and months, probably because of my vlogs. I've complained in my vlogs that Scottish schools don't take school kids to these like historic sites in Scotland enough. Maybe it has worked and maybe the local schools in Scotland now are like just forcing kids off to Culloden. And I can see if I was a kid, to be honest with you, once is enough with Culloden. Like I've been a few times now, like talking about Outlander and stuff, but if I was a kid, once is definitely enough. I kind of feel sympathy. This is a funny one, right? Because there might be a bit of confusion about a certain word, okay? The Clockhagen. I don't know where that is, no idea. I've never been there, right? Great restaurant, three stars. Shame about the midgets. I wish we hadn't gone. The meal's ruined by midgets everywhere. And we were sitting inside. We were even moved tables near the back wall, but we were either followed by them and they were at that table too. We woke up in the following morning covered in bites and very itchy. Uh, midgets, okay. Midgets. Uh, I don't think they're talking about the same thing here, but when I picture midgets, I picture something different. The word they're actually looking for is midges. Midges are minuscule little insects like um, mosquitoes that bite you furiously in swarms, okay? We have them in Scotland. There's basically nowhere in Scotland you can get away from them in summer. Number eight, and we are getting to a real Scottish classic now, Eileen Donan Castle. Beautiful castle. It's been voted the, the, is it the most beautiful castle in the world or was it the most photographed castle in the world? I think it's the most photographed castle in the world. Near the Isle of Skye actually. And it is the most photographed castle in the world because it is one of the most beautiful to take photos of with the moat around it and all that on the sea loch. Not according to the reviewer. One star. Me expect more. Sorry I'm going against the tide. But by one of the symbols of Scotland, I expect more. From the outside it imposes with its grandeur. But inside, it's fake like Judas. Then one of the last 1,000 year old rooms with weapons placed inside a cabinet. Ikea. No good. Sorry if I disappointed anyone. I've not been inside that castle, right? I think it's in private hands though. It's quite expensive to do up a castle inside, so you could kind of imagine they might actually have Ikea furniture. I can't comment any further because I've never been inside, but it is a beautiful castle to take photos of, that is for certain. The fourth road bridge for us is like sacred. Like the San Francisco bridge for you guys, or the Brooklyn bridge maybe, even better, right? 
You just don't mess with these type of things. Uh, I think this person's confused. Here just to see when the two trains pass. A train is a train. Ah, it's actually a train bridge. Ah, ha, ha. Lucky the day is super good weather. Not a cloud in the sky. So blue. Next time come when we must take the train, we'd go. Um, we're back at Loch Ness, okay? We're talking about Loch Ness a minute ago. And I'm gonna be a bit controversial with this one. You stay to the end. You deserve some honesty, right? Loch Ness. One star. Holes are nicer. Loch Ness is just a huge lake. That but not great different from others. What must be emphasised, however, is that Loch Ness is a waste of money mongering. Just expect nothing. Whole hole, despite what, the hole. I'm not gonna um, excuse that um, shocking use of, of language there. However, I have said this to friends, I've said this to family members, and anybody who comes to Scotland and I, I give them a bit of a tour around or advice, I always say the same thing. So I need to be honest with you guys. Loch Ness isn't really my favorite place in Scotland, and I think it's overhyped. People go there because of the Loch Ness Monster. Don't mess with Nessie, Nessie is, um, is real and like we cherish Nessie, okay? But the Loch Ness itself, I wouldn't say it's a hole, okay? Well, literally speaking, it is a hole, it's a giant hole. I think it's the biggest hole in the UK. I think it holds more fresh water than all the lakes in England and Wales put together. So it is literally a hole. That's kind of harsh language, but it is, it's certainly not my favorite place in Scotland to visit. I wouldn't advise people to go there necessarily. It's not even in my top 10 because it is essentially a little bit ugly. I mean, compared with other places in the world, it's probably not ugly, not the right word, but uh, how can I put this? We have got far more beautiful places in Scotland. We've got a lot of awesome places to visit. And if I was to list places that I advise people to go, Loch Ness is generally quite far down that list. Okay, so there's my honest opinion. Loch Ness, it's all right, but there are better. Uh, and that concludes my review of the reviews um, on TripAdvisor, a very handy platform for finding out your next travel destination where you should go. I think maybe you should just stick to my vlogs, right? At least they'll be more coherent slightly than some of these reviews. But anyway, they're quite amusing, right? They're quite funny. Um, some of these people are harsh as well. I'm gonna do more of these because I've found some gems, especially when we're talking about Edinburgh, my home city. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching until the end. It's been great chatting to you. What did you think about all this? I'd love to know your comments down below about some of these reviews. Did you leave any of these reviews? Have you read any funny reviews of locations that you're familiar with or you're from? If you want to laugh, I suggest you do, okay? Go to TripAdvisor, wherever you live, your town, and click on your landmarks and then click on all the reviews and go to the one star ones and I bet there's some crackers out there that will make you belly laugh, all right? Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been great chatting, as always. And until the next adventure, I hope we have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.